Okay, let's try not to fail as hard as I almost did last time, okay? And before we begin, just in case you're wondering if I sound any different from usual, well, I have a stuffed nose. I got a cold. So, yeah, it happens, so I apologize if it annoys you. I know it annoys me. It's never fun having a cold, believe me. But I'm just going to have to deal with it. Anyway! And I'm surprised I didn't receive a single comment regarding this. You people are making progress! That's a good sign. Anyway, no one asked me why I didn't mention the TSG Castlevania Marathon yet. It was because I was waiting to know which charity it would be for, because they've, they're having a few issues with the organization of the, the marathon this time around, most, mostly on the charity front. They still... Well, I wouldn't say they don't have a charity yet, but they haven't confirmed anything yet. So, yeah, they're, the, the marathon is still going to go on as planned, I'm sure of it. It's going to start on Friday, uh, the 29th of October at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central over at thespeedgamers.com. And as for the games being played, well, of course, it's a Castlevania marathon. There's no official list just yet, but I'm going to venture a guess and say that that's going to be on a you-name-it-they'll-play-it basis. And of course, as this is the Halloween Marathon, everyone's going to be dressed up as things the good people of the TSG community paid to see. We're going to have... God damn, I, I don't even remember what, what anyone's supposed to be. Well, I guess it's going to be a brand new rediscovery when we get there. And, oh, we're, 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 we're gonna get a few good ones, though. I, I, I do know that much. And, yes, I, I, you know, what? I got an idea for next year's Halloween Marathon. You know how it's, uh, the costumes are usually uh, decided on the marathon before the one on Halloween? Well, next year, I am totally going to be starting a drive to get Brit dressed up as Mirror B. Come on, admit it, it would be the best thing ever. Mirror Brit. I can see it now. It's going to be awesome. But, of course, I'm going to come back to it in August of next year, just to tell you guys that I have this idea, and I hope that people will get into it in great numbers so that we can make it happen. Anyway, as for the details regarding the charity... I'm going to get back to you once this is determined, hopefully. And, okay, on to another subject. In the last video, I mentioned that I had a few things to say about Pluto's status as a dwarf planet, and we discussed this in the comments section of the last video a little, but just so that you get an idea, you know, a lot of people have been complaining about how Pluto should remain a planet for no particularly good reason, other than because it's been a planet for 76 years. But... Let, let's be honest here, okay? Pluto is a chunk of rock that is 6 billion kilometers away, okay? So why anyone other than scientists would give a crap about what Pluto is called, whether it's a planet or a dwarf planet or a giant turd or anything like that, I don't get it. I don't get the point. Pluto's still going to be a planet in my heart! Nobody cares! It's just a chunk of rock nobody's ever been to! And furthermore, since 1930, which is the year when Pluto was discovered, there have been other celestial bodies in the solar system that are closer to being planets to, than Pluto that have been discovered. Most notably Eris, which is farther away than Pluto, but also bigger. So if Pluto's a planet, then Eris has to be a planet too. And that's not counting other bodies like, uh, for example, Ceres and others. So, yeah, either we got eight planets, or we got like 13 or such. I don't know the exact number, but still, we can't just get away with having Pluto be a planet and not those other dwarf planets. Okay, so I just needed to vent. My ranting is done. Moving on to another subject. 
which I wanted to talk about ever since I began this LP, but we're on episode 14, now with 15 minute episodes, and I'm only getting around to talking about it now, so it's been itching me for a long time, I assure you of that. It's about one of my favorite new items from Black and White, which is called the Pre-Evolution Stone. You may have heard of it, you may have not heard of it. For those of you who haven't heard of it, I'll fill you in. Basically, you attach this item to any Pokémon that isn't fully evolved, and both defenses will be increased by 50%. Now that does sound like a sweet deal, huh? Unfortunately, you can't just give it to any pre-evolved form and expect results. There are many reasons for that, most notably because evolved forms are have better stats from the get-go. So they, they got better defense, better special defense, and better HP in most cases. And, and of course, usually the, the pre-evolved forms with the pre-evolution stones will usually be slightly bulkier. However, those evolved forms, the fully evolved forms, have other advantages, such as higher attack and speed, which will require you to take less hits to begin with, the best defense is attack, apparently, from what I've heard, and there's also the fact that they're going to have a free held item slot to pack something like, I don't know, leftovers if you want to match the bulk of the pre-evolved forms while keeping your superior attack and speed. Now that's just theory, but there are a few cases where it's going to be really good. And that's why it's one of my favorite new items, because there are, there are a few cases where it's definitely going to work. Case in point, Dustclops. Yeah, Dustclops, because when it evolves, it mostly gains attack and speed. However, it's fairly easy to run a Dustclops set that doesn't really require either of those stats. Dustclops has more than enough support options to do that, and on top of that, we're going to need a new spin blocker now that Rotom's forms are no longer of the ghost types, so Dustclops could fill that mold pretty well, actually. And, yeah, of course, usually that kind of set is shut down by Taunt, but that's part of the, of the risk. I'm not necessarily saying Dustclops is going to be better than Dusk Noir, though the possibility is definitely going to be there, because, well, there's not much difference in defenses between Dustclops and Dusk Noir at the Pre-Evolution Stone, which, well, basically what it does is, is that it cuts all direct damage by a third, and you got a recipe for awesomeness. Another one that I'm really looking forward to, Porygon 2! Yeah, it was already bulkier than Porygon Z to begin with, but now the difference is going to be even bigger. And let's not hide from it, Porygon 2 will be greatly improved thanks to Trace working on even more top threats. At least once those are available in the Dream World, I'm referring to the likes of Zapdos, Raikou, Suicune, that really, really hate facing their own abilities. We got uh, Lightning Rod, Zapdos, the new and improved Lightning Rod. We got Vault Absorb, Raikou, Water Absorb, Suicune, and the list goes on. So, Porygon 2, that's one I'm looking forward to using. Maybe, it, maybe I'm completely wrong and it's not going to amount to much, but based on Theory Mon alone, I'm really liking the way it looks right now. And other than that, well, how about Chansey? Take Blissey since their defensive stats are fairly similar and add 50% to both defenses at the cost of a held item slot and some major special attack. That's going to be a big problem for Chansey, the fact that it can really use nothing but Seismic Toss to attack, whereas Blissey can use stuff like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam and so on, but Chansey's really going to be stuck with the uh, Seismic Toss and nothing else. And basically, it's Pokémon whose stats are fairly close to their evolutions that are going to benefit the most from it. The rest, I wouldn't um, bother too much with it, but for, but for these special cases, I think they really make the Pre-Evolution Stone one of the coolest new items in the game. Now, if I remember, this is one of those pit stops between two cities that you can use to sleep, but this one is completely useless, and you'll see why in a second, because we're about to enter a place called Eterna Forest, 
we're, we're going to, in, to encounter the first of five NPCs which are commonly called the Stat Trainers. I'm going to get into that designation a little later. But basically, when you, when you meet those stat trainers, they're going to ask you to escort them through a certain area. Just going to show you here, we can't go through there because there are cut trees, so we really have to go through the forest. So, yeah. Now, this woman here is called Cheryl, and that's the one we're going to be escorting through Eterna Forest. So, the thing about being escorted, or rather, escorting those trainers but even though they really seem to be the ones doing the escorting because the cool thing is that after each battle you get completely healed so while you're with a stat trainer don't worry you're pretty much invincible you can't really die unless you suck a lot and the reason why they're called stat trainers is because you can fight alongside them in the battle tower or against them at the Top Trainer Cafe, and th their, those trainers primarily focus on a certain stat on their teams. For example, Cheryl here, her Pokémon in Eterna Forest is a Chansey. And, of course, if you can't associate Chansey with the right stat, then you clearly haven't been playing Pokémon for very long. Of course, Chansey is the HP stat trainer, there's also attack, defense, speed, and special attack. I don't think there's a stat trainer for special defense, but oh well. There are only five trainers anyway and six stats. Something had to give. So yeah, you're essentially invincible while accompanying those trainers, which is why it seems like it's more them escorting you than the reverse. And this thing here is the Moss Rock, which means if you go into that particular region of grass, and you level up an Eevee, you are going to evolve it into Leafeon. And just so you know, you can't evolve an Eevee into Espeon or Umbreon in the vicinity of that Moss Rock or the Ice Rock we're going to see later in the game on Route 217. Now, I'm not too bothered about getting poisoned by those Badoos while I'm here, because as I said, full healing after each battle, so I can get poisoned all I want, and I'm going to get healed after each battle. And it's not this one either. Not j uh, I, look, I, I just completely messed up my explanation. Let me try again. It's not just this particular trainer that heals you. You might think it is the case since she's got a Chansey, which is known for healing, but it's not. The guy with the clay doll heals you, the girl with the Kadabra heals you, everyone heals you. It's not because of the Chansey at all. Anyway, a feature that you may have noticed in these areas where you escort somebody else is that there are wild double battles. That's right, since you are two trainers together, well, they gotta have two wild Pokémon at a time. But, as you probably know if you've played the game, you can only catch something, well, attempt to catch something even if it fails, if there's only one opposing Pokémon left. So, you're, you have to kill the other one before attempting to catch anything, just so you know. And by the way, all tr all trainer battles in here are double battles against two trainers. The game's been designed that way. Yeah, Egg Bomb isn't gonna kill much. You know, off Chansey's awesome five base attack score. Really threatening. Fear the Egg Bomb. Uh, yeah, eggs on your face, Chansey. Anyways, I was, as, as I was saying, this is Double Battle Heaven, and you just know how much I love Double Battles. So, yeah, I, ju I guess I just gotta bear with it. At least I'm completely invincible, and did I just see that Silcoon go down to an Egg Bomb? Wow! Silcoon must really suck! Oh my god, but anyway, it's maybe it's because Chansey is level 20 in Platinum. I, I do know for a fact that in Diamond and Pearl it was only 15, but they increased it to 20 in Platinum because, you know, full healing after every battle wasn't easy enough, so they, did, they decided to make Chansey even more powerful, so powerful that it can actually take down a Silcoon. Okay, I'm, go I'm gonna try and stop making fun of Egg Bomb, because when you have such a level advantage over everything, it 
actually starts to show and maybe you can get something done. So I'm just going to show you to end this video off. Cheryl has a few things to say if you talk to her, but nothing really interesting. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go back to dominating the Puffs box.